Number 13. Now this is an important question. Pay attention, please. A clock loses one second every minute. When I see a question like this, and again, as I said, we are learning how to answer these types of questions particularly. There's a very good chance of seeing the same question or very similar one on the test. So here's what I do. I know that this is the type of question I call list or table. I just, you know, I just put a list or I draw a table right away. Let's see. A clock loses one second. So I go, okay, loses one second. Pay attention, guys. Every minute. So every one minute. It is set to the correct time at 10 a.m. on February 4. In which month is the next day on which it shows the correct time? Now, here's a little tip for you guys. Even though you are a little bit old for this tip, this is something you should have learned a very long time ago. But let me just say it, maybe you don't know it. One of the best ways to answer any math question, any word problem, is to visualize it, is to actually see the information in real life, okay? So I have a clock. Now, since you have a clock, you can think of it as a circular clock on the wall, like the one we were talking about a little while ago. But then that wouldn't really make sense because here it says 10 a.m. on February 4. Well, when do you usually see a.m. and the date on a clock? It's when you have a digital clock. So I would visualize a digital clock. So I have a big digital clock that has the time, has the date. It's 10 a.m. Now, this clock loses a second. It's not working properly. It loses one second. Every one minute of actual time, so every one minute of real time passing, the clock I have on the, on, on, on the wall or on the shelf or whatever loses a second from its time. The question says, when will this clock show the correct time again? So what's happening is my clock is losing a second, losing a second, losing every single minute, it's losing a second. Every day, it's losing some time. Every 10 days, it's losing some time. Every month, it's losing some time. When will this clock show the exact real time, the same time I have on my hand? When? When it loses... 24 hours. Come again, listen to me, please. Let me explain this really quickly first, then we move on. Look, guys. Now, it's 10. That's my clock. But it's actually, on my iPhone, for example, 10. So nothing's wrong. After some time, my clock has lost seconds and seconds and seconds. So, so my clock is now showing something like, uh, let's say, 12.52. But my actual time is 12.58. After a few days, my clock is showing 5 p.m., but the actual time is 5.13 p.m. After some time, my clock is showing 6 a.m., for example, but the actual time is 6.23 a.m., and so on. These are just examples. Forget about the numbers. So what's happening is my clock keeps on losing time. So the difference between that clock that isn't working and the real time keeps on getting bigger. Every As, as time goes by, the gap between the wrong time on the clock and the actual time that I have is getting bigger. When will the clock say 10? and my actual time say 10 as well. When will that happen? That's the question. It will happen when the clock loses a whole 24 hours. So it would say 10, but it would think it was April 2nd, for example. And my clock would say 10 as well at the same time, but actually it would be April 3rd. So my clock, the one that isn't working, would have lost a whole day, a whole 24 hours, but then it will show the correct time. Then what's going to happen? It's going to start losing more time, so the gap is going to start on widening again until another 24 hours pass. Okay? 
think about this really carefully after class. You'll find that it's not that hard. So, I want to know when the exact time is going to happen. The exact time is going to happen, again, the, the exact time is going to be uh, like the, 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 the clock, the lossy clock, after 24 hours have passed. Okay? Then it's going to be right. Okay, how do I go to 24 hours? Here's what I would think of. Take a look, guys, please. I say, okay, now let's take this one step at a time. One second, I want it to be one minute. So this is going to lose one minute after how many? After 60. Okay, guys, so as I said, we now have the clock that is losing one second every one minute. And as we explained, in order for this clock, the lossy clock, the clock that isn't working properly, to show the exact time as a normal clock, the actual correct time, it would need to lose a whole 24 hours. So, here's what I just said a little while ago. Let's do this again. We need to lose 24 hours in order for the bad clock to show the actual time. Now, I go step by step. So I'd say, from one second to one minute, that's how much is going to lose, we have to multiply by 60. Okay? Then, to go from one minute to one hour, remember we want to get 24 hours, so we go from minute to hours, we multiply by another 60. Correct? Perfect. Now, to go from one hour to 24 hours, which is the final answer that I want, we need to multiply by 24. Now remember that every time this clock loses something, it also relates to the actual time, which is what I'm trying to look for. Now, one second, it loses one minute. We know that. I multiplied by 60 here, so I need to multiply by 60 here too. One minute times 60 becomes one hour. Okay, perfect. Then I multiplied here so I multiply again here. One hour times 60 gives me 60 hours. Okay, very good. Then in red, I multiplied by 24, so I do the same thing here, times 24. Now, what times 24? Take a look at this. It's going to be 60 hours, that's what we already have, times 24. Now, should I try to multiply? No, don't. Take a look. Hours times 24. What is 24 hours? It's a day. So 60 hours times 24 is like saying how many days? It's like saying 60 days because it's going to be 60 times 24 in hours. 60 times 24 hours is 60 times one day, so 60 days. So the clock is going to lose 24 hours every 60 days. So how much time will pass before this clock shows the actual time? 60 days must pass. That's approximately two months. It was February 4, so March, then April. The answer is C. Easy? I think so. Okay, next one. Number 14. For approximately how many million seconds have you been alive? Okay, so the, this question is for you, not for me. So how old are you guys? You're like, what, 13, correct? So you're 13 years old, and I want to find how many million seconds you have been alive. Okay, that's easy. 13 years, years. We want to change that to hours. Okay, so we go times 24. This gives us how many hours you've been alive, right? Of course not. We have to go times days first. Okay, let's do this again. Pay attention. So 13 years, we go times 365, and that's the approximation for how many days there are in a year. 13 years times 365 will give you how many days you have been alive. Okay, perfect. Then, times 24, because this is how many days you're alive, will give you a number that is how many hours you've been alive. Okay, then we move on and we do times 60. That will give you how many minutes you've been alive. Okay, then we move on and do another 60. 
that will give you how many seconds you've been alive. Okay, question. Why didn't I actually multiply each of these? Because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go there. That's These are a lot of numbers. Let's just write them first. Maybe there's some kind of shortcut here. So, let's go. 13 years times 365 days times 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. How many million seconds have you been alive? Okay. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to try to do a little trick. If you look at the answer choices, there's 4, 40, 400, 4,000, 40,000. So there's basically an increment here, multiples of 10. If I try to just find out how many zeros there should be or how many digits there should be, I'd be able to get the answer right away. Now, let's take a look. Here we can use approximation, especially because it says approximately. What I'm going to do is I'm going to approximate to the nearest tens. Okay? So I, I want all of the numbers to be in ending in zeros. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do. 13 is going to be 10. 365 is going to be 400. 24 is going to be 20. 60 and 60 are going to stay 60 and 60. Okay? Because I, I don't want to go like really far. Now, let's count. If you multiply these numbers by each other, how many zeros do you get? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. 6 zeros. Okay? Now let's multiply the tens or the hundreds or whatever other digits we have. So 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 6 is going to be, what's 8 times 6? 48. 8 times 6. Okay, 48. 48 times 6, approximately 50 times 6, that's what? 300. So we have something like 300. So, how many million seconds? Here are your million seconds. So about how many million seconds? About 300 million seconds. So the answer is probably going to be C because 300 and 400, they're both in the hundreds. So that's probably going to be the best answer. Okay, this is the fastest way to do a question like this. Okay, last question, number 15. I want to cut a piece of wood into five shorter pieces. The first cut takes two seconds, and then each subsequent cut takes um, twice as long as did the previous one. How many seconds will the job require? Now, of course, when I do this with, with some of my students, they, they sometimes ask me a question, and they're, they're right. This should have been written in a better way. Again, this is a, a VCA question. I didn't write it. They would say, well, what is the shape of the piece of wood? Because if it's a square or a rectangle, that's one thing, but if it's a circle, that's another thing. Now, nobody said what the shape was, and the answer may be different. You're right. However, if I say a piece of wood, what comes uh, to, to most of our minds would be uh, like a log, like a rectangle, right? Okay, so here's a piece of wood. I want to cut this into five shorter pieces. Now, here's a very important part, uh, something that I said today. I said, guys, you need to visualize a question. Whenever you read a question, a word problem, you need to visualize it, actually try to see it, because it makes things much easier. Now, for those of you who don't want to visualize it or don't want to draw anything, here's what they would do. They'd say, okay, the first cut takes two seconds. Then each subsequent cut takes twice as long. So they say, okay, so it's two, and then four, and then eight, and then 16, and then 32. One, two, three, four, five. I ask him, why did you say five? It says here, it says five. Okay, now add these numbers up. Two plus four is six. Six plus eight is 14. 14 and 16 is 30. 30 and 32 is 62. So let's say the answer is E. Wrong. Why? You need to visualize. Well, are these numbers wrong? No, these numbers are right. Okay, let's visualize. Here's your piece of wood. The first cut takes two seconds. The second cut takes four seconds, correct. The third cut, eight seconds, correct. The fourth cut, 16 seconds, correct. And then that's it. Why? Because if you use four cuts, you get five pieces. So we're not going to use this. Now the answer is what? 2 plus 4, 6. 6 plus 8, 14. 14 plus 16 is 29. Is that right? Nope. 
Now, why did I get this wrong? Because I tried to add the numbers in order and I made a mistake while I was adding these numbers. And this is something that could very well happen on the test. You guys were lucky because there was no 29 in the answer choices. Okay, if I'm going to add numbers like this on the test, especially on the test you're going to be stressed out, you won't really be, you know, feeling that um, confident sometimes. You need to actually focus when you're adding or subtracting numbers, even if they're very easy numbers like this. One trick is to try to group numbers that give you a 10 together. For example, I'd say, okay, 2 and 8 is 10. 4 and 16 is 20. 20 and 10 is 30. That's an easier, faster, and more efficient way to add even easy numbers like this on the test. So the answer is D, 30 seconds.